sells a movie based off a Stephen King novel that's had a ridiculously long incubation period. Back in 2006, it was supposed to be directed by Eli Roth, and then that fell through, and it wasn't actually filmed until 2014 by Todd Williams, who was the guy who directed Paranormal Activity 2. The movie was finished for the longest time. It was supposed to play at some big film festival in 2015, and it got canceled at the last minute by the studio. It got to the point where John Cusack, who was the star of the film, and Stephen King, who adapted the screenplay from his own novel, started asking questions. Why isn't this released? You know, when is this ever going to come out? And they were getting nothing. They weren't getting any answers from the studio. Finally, after being dropped onto direct video uh, July of 2016, and after seeing it, I understand. This movie is now a frontrunner for worst movie of the year. The idea in and of itself is pretty cool. It's the execution that is horrible. It's about John Cusack who plays this guy named Clay who is in an airport and uh, they show that everybody's connected. Everybody's on their cell phone. I can't think of a movie that has had a more annoying intro credit sequence. It shows John Cusack walking through this airport and he's trying to uh, find somewhere to plug his phone in because the battery's dead. And whenever somebody's name appears in the credits, there's this big black bar that pops up and blocks like a chunk of the screen. And there's stuff that's happening, but it's kind of blocking the view. It was a terrible design choice. I don't know who did that, but right off the bat, it sets a weird, irritating tone for the film. John Cusack is like the only person who's not on his cell phone and there's this pulse that goes out and everybody that's on their cell phone immediately starts murdering one another he meets up with samuel L. jackson and isabel Furman, and what he's trying to do is locate his family see if they survived the movie could have been enjoyable except for three major problems the first being the directing this is some of the most shoddy awful directing i've seen in quite a while it's not shaky cam like when uh, there's action going on, they're jiggling the camera all over the place, but it's that really irritating thing where everything's handheld. So, for example, there's one point where there's a conversation between Samuel L. Jackson and John Cusack, and they're both sitting there and they're talking back and forth to each other. But the camera is going all over the place, and it's like, just hold the shot still. It's beyond annoying. And it was like that the entire film. The camera was always moving. The second thing is the editing. The editing in this feels so incredibly all over the place. Almost to the point of where they're cutting people off mid-word. It'll be like, hey, we need to do that. And then they'll be outside or uh, they'll be moving along and it'll just cut to something different. It felt so disjointed. And it makes me wonder if maybe they made the film and they had their budget cut so they weren't able to go back and do some pickup shots or just any additional material. And they had to edit the film with what they had. The third thing is the visual effects were a abysmal they were on par with like an asylum movie there's a point early in the film where john cusack's in the airport and there was a plane that had a mid-air collision and it looked like somebody had a toy airplane and they threw it at the glass it was unbelievably fake looking and then the rest of the movie, there were these really awful, obvious uh, smoke effects that were thrown in. There was a lot of fake CGI fire, and everything just stuck out like a sore thumb. Some parts, like the airplane part, didn't look like it was the final render. It looked like it was a test render. It was like, okay, here's the CGI effect, and uh, this is what it's going to look like. And they were like, okay, good. And it's like, no, 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 this isn't complete yet. We still have to send this off to a render farm. And uh, no, that's good enough. You know, nobody will care. And... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the only thing I could possibly think of. It just was that bad. There was something in this movie. There was one redeeming moment in this movie because it was so absolutely absurd. I don't know if it was in the book. I haven't read the book. But what happens is during the day, the cell phone zombies are walking the streets in packs. And if you are not a zombie, they run over and they tear you apart. But at nighttime, they all meet up at this big football field and they lay down and their mouths open and they sing the, uh, I've always called it Trollio. I don't know if that's how you actually pronounce it, but they all sing the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I howled 
laughing. I I couldn't believe it. The movie was trolling the audience. So so that had me in tears. I couldn't I'm like are you kidding me? So then John Cusack and Samuel L. Jackson uh they meet up with uh Stacy Keach who is the uh headmaster over the school where the football field is. And he basically tells them, "Okay, look, they come here every night and they sit here and they're completely docile, but then at dawn they wake up and they're violent again. So we need to take them out." So they get this fuel truck and they drive through the crowd and spill gas on everybody and they're driving through the crowd and it's just crunch crunch they're driving over bodies of people that are just laying there singing the trollio song at one point the truck gets stuck on somebody's head and john cusack and samuel jackson are drinking uh bourbon or, or something because they're just they can't handle the fact that they're spilling gasoline over all like hundreds of bodies and they're driving over them and just killing them and, and now they're stuck the tires stuck on somebody's head and finally he just you know puts it low and brr, crunch and then they set them on fire and just hundreds of people are now just being charred to death it was one of the most bizarre slash funny things i've ever seen in a movie Beyond that, though, the rest of the movie was just awful. It was the three of them, and then they picked up a fourth, and they're traveling to try to get some answers to find out what happened. And again, you know, still looking for John Cusack's family. And they all keep having this same nightmare where they're seeing the same villain in their dreams. Then it finally ends. I'm not going to spoil the ending in case anybody actually wants to see it. But uh, it's one of the most head-scratching, stupid, huh? endings ever and apparently uh that was not the ending that was in the book uh stephen king wrote the screenplay and he said that a lot of people didn't like the ending that he had in the book so he changed it for the movie and i am actually curious to find out what his ending in the book was cell is a laughably bad horror film Maybe one day the story will come out as to what happened. Did the studio screw the film over? Did they cut the budget? Was it just a incompetent director? Or did the director get screwed over? Who knows? What I do know is that the movie as it stands is abysmal. I could see this especially because of the troll scene becoming a infamous film. Something along the lines of A Wicker Man or The Room. Something that is just so laughably bad that it transcends that and becomes funny. I just know that watching it as it was, I thought it was awful. But it's possible with a crowd and perhaps riff tracks, this could be salvaged into a hilarious comedy. If you must see the troll scene, I'm sure it'll be up on YouTube at some point. But as for the movie itself, it sucks. Please do yourself a favor and avoid this. 